I, I scripted everything out so I wouldn't forget anything. Hey guys, it's Asher from Asher Warrior Props, and today, finally, after God knows how long, I've been asked since I posted my original NCR Ranger template, hey, do the Elite Ryke here. And I have to put it off for ages because, I, I don't know, I just never got around to it. I've done plenty of commissions for these and just never recorded it. I know this is black right now. Uh, that's because after I finished the build, I kind of entered the workflow state and like started priming it and sealing it to paint it and then I was like oh crap I need to record it I didn't skip a step or anything it's just plasti dipped because uh, after I finished the build I went right into like cleaning it up and then normally my next step is to start uh, painting and priming and whatever so yeah to get started with the video head on over to my website there is a free PDF template it is labeled uh, NCR Elite Riot gear helmet don't click on the one that has like the ncr ranger as well it is purely this one check out the link in the description for my affiliate link for hd foam grab yourself a roll of 10 6 and 2 and some 4 so get one of everything really um because I, I did i used everything for this build as you can see plus some uh, just random screws and whatever. I always like to use real screws in my build just to help add to like the realism. The only thing that's missing for the build um, that you're not gonna see in the video at all is I normally have a radio antenna right here, but I ordered it and it's been delayed in shipping like three times, so yeah, So, but you can use your imagination. Uh, once you've got your whole template uh, printed out, this template will be printed in poster mode on eight and a half by 11 paper. I know I cover that in my how to print templates tutorial, but I get asked every single time, hey, what paper size and how do I print this? It's always poster mode, always eight and a half by 11. I'm gonna start out with the mask first. The mask is the mask. <laughs> Most of the mask is done out of six millimeter HD foam. So once you've got it all traced out, let's get into it. Trace and cut out the mask parts and use a flat knife to do these cutout sections on the mask right here. And what I mean by a flat knife is just one of these. The blade is flat, so you can kind of use it like a punch and just kind of stamp it down. Uh, that makes doing sharp interior cuts like that super, super easy. Once you've got the flat parts of the cutouts cut, then we're gonna go over to these little round parts right here. And the best way to do that is use your flat knife and a regular knife, and then go in with a Dremel and round off the caps of them. Uh, this is just gonna make them look really, really clean. As you can see here, like we are working off of a seamless build. Super clean, super nice. Uh, and part of that is just taking extra steps to use Dremels or other cutting tools. Lay out all of the mask parts in their kind of assembly order like you see here, and then we can get into attaching. For this entire build, besides a couple details, I'm using barge contact cement. Uh, there will be a gluing video coming up soon, uh, which goes into how and when I use different types of glue. Uh, before I get asked, hot glue you can probably use. It's not gonna come out as clean. Um, I, it's not my favorite, but you can use it if you want. So yeah, there's your answer to that. What I like to start with is pay attention to the names on the template because that's what I'm gonna be referring to. So the first thing we're going to start with is the nose ridge and cheek panels. The cheek panels do have a 45 degree angle on one side. The template is color coded and labeled. So if there's something that you feel like I missed, refer to the template because the template has most of the instructions there as well. Once you've got your 45 degree angle cut on the cheek panels, we're gonna attach the cheek panels to the main nose ridge part. Should go together a little bit like so. The lower nose and nose ridge and cheek panels are gonna be stair-stepped, and what do I mean by that? You can see that they are stair-stepped down. So what I did was I used the midpoint of the foam thickness. So for instance, we're using six millimeter foam for most of this build. If your uh, foam is six millimeters thick, you are going to glue it at the halfway mark at three millimeters. Eh, it's not good shot. But once you do that, it's going to lead to this really neat uh, stair step effect down, which matches the game. After you've got that second tier down, we then have the mask center filter A, B, and the center circle. You can attach the circle first or later, but once you've got the circle and A and B put together, you're then going to stair step it down to that second tier of the mask, like so. 
After that, we're gonna go over to the eye goggle section. I think it's called eye trim on the template. We're going to attach the lower eye trim together first, and this is going to be stair-stepped the opposite direction. So as you can see here, everything else stair-steps in. The goggle trim eye piece <laughs> stair-steps out. Once you've got that piece on and the little uh, nose nubby, then we're going to attach the eyebrow piece. That is just the top. It connects the uh, mask uh, no bridge piece to the goggles and the rest of the mask. And the mask base should look something like this. Now, if you turn it over on the bottom, you'll notice we have an open rectangle hole area on the bottom of the chin. It's that right there. Uh, it's not on the template because some people resize and whatever. The best way to fix the hole right there is just cut out a rectangle out of four or two millimeter HD foam and just simply glue that in. I used uh, Bob Smith super glue. You can use contact cement if you want. Finally, the details we're gonna finish off here is the holes on the mask. Or like, I think I called them the grill or whatever. I made these little uh, filter looking pieces in the game. They're not like a mesh. They are like, uh, they've got like, they look like little ribs going through it. So what I did was I took some two millimeter base and I made some two millimeter ribs, glued those together to look something like this, and simply tacked those on the inside of the mask to cover the holes, and it should look like this. So with that, the base build of the mask is done, and we're gonna head on over to the dome. Normally I start with the dome, but you know, you know, throw a curveball at you, keep you on your toes. The dome is almost identical to the original uh, video, so if you wanna refer to that, you can. I'll also cover it here if you're just skipping the old video and going straight to this one. So, lay out the pieces in the order in which they go. They should look like this when they're all laid out. They are also labeled, if that helps. What I like to do first is glue all the darts together. What are the darts? The darts are the little V cuts across all the helmets. And what I like to do is fold the pieces in half and then glue the edges like so. Set them aside for the glue to get tacky and glue all of the darts together. This is just gonna make your pieces a lot more manageable rather than trying to put all the pieces together and then do all the darts. I've tried that before and it sucks ass and I won't do it again. So once all the darts are glued together, you then have your more manageable sized pieces and they are all gonna go together like so. The assembly order is front to part B, B to A, and glue the top pieces left and right together attach the front and sides to the top parts, and then bring it all together and attach it on the back plate. The back plate is the four split that is a little bit longer. The front is the four split that is shorter. They are also labeled on the template. I'm taking a lot of pride that I label things now. A lot of people really like how I do seamless builds and always ask uh, tips for that. I intentionally glued this pretty sloppily so I can show you how to do this. What I like to do first is hit the whole build, you'll see you've got these like yellow glue stains. If you try to sand with the yellow glue stains, you're still gonna have glue in there sticking out and it's gonna gum up your sandpaper. So what I like to do is with a rag, whip out some acetone. Once you've got all the glue stains gone or mostly gone, again, if you've still got some, no biggie. Uh, the only downside to doing the acetone effect and not just gluing cleanly is sometimes you get split seams, but we will cover that in a minute. Once you've got all the glue stains gone, we're then gonna sand the dome. I did a mix of using my random orbital sander and my uh, belt sander. Either one works, just make sure you start with a medium grit and go up to high grit. Uh, again, I covered this in my sanding 101 video, but the basis of sanding is the lower the grit, the more material you're taking away, and the higher the grit, the smoother you're gonna get. It's a sim you're just getting rid of the texture, essentially. Once you've got your dome sanded, if you have any split seams, we're gonna cover those with silicone, and then we're gonna round off the edges of the dome, and then what we're gonna do is heat it. You'll notice in the game, the helmet has like a little lip. You know what, lip? What I like to do is heat it, put the palm of my hand on the dome and peel back a little bit and just do that around the helmet. Um, mostly in the front is where the lip uh, happens. So heat that up and roll it and let it cool off. If you have gaps from the acetone treatment, you can fill these with quick seal silicone, let it dry and then you can wet sand it to smooth it back out and then you're good to go. So next we've got the dome details. It's this square rectangle circle thing in the back and then this little tabby thing. Um, these are done out of two millimeter HD foam and are glued on with Bob Smith super glue. They should go together like so. You should have your big square 
and then your circle, your two rectangles, and then below that you have this little tabby thing. So with that, you've got the dome and the mask largely done, except we have one more part on this dome. The big defining factor between the original dome and this one, besides the details, is it's got this score line. And what I did was I marked it with a pen. I traced, uh, I matched one of the seams all the way across and then added these little like trapezoid divot thingies. I used a cutoff wheel on my Dremel to Dremel this out. Um, because it gives a nice space in there. You can also use a knife and score it and then heat it, but that's up to you. After that, the only thing we have left is this forehead detail right here. I did this out of four millimeter HD foam and outward beveled the edges, and that gives you this nice crisp clean detail that goes just on the forehead right there. Finally, I like to do uh, real screws and rivets for my builds because I think it just adds to the realism and makes it look like film prop when you use real screws and whatever. So at this point, I did add the screws that go on the helmet. Uh, I did not include some of those details in the template because some people like to alter the details and kind of make it their own character. So make sure you always have a reference image if you're going for pure game accuracy. My template should be followed as the build guide and then you should also have reference images to work on your own. Next, back on over to the mask, we have these score lines that are from the eyebrow or like the goggle piece down to the peak of the second tier right here. I drew these out and then did a score line with my knife and then heated those up to kind of separate them. Super easy, it's not on the template because some people like it, some people don't. Because again, there are there's a range of the versions of this helmet and some, thing, and some details are interchangeable. So again, some of those details aren't added. Again, make sure you have a game reference pulled up. Let's get on to the filters. I like to start this out with uh, one of the more tedious parts. I have some two millimeter HD foam here that I am taking a punch on this square. Cut it in a grid sequence. Once that's done, cut out all of your filter pieces. On the side piece, one end should be an inward bevel and one side should be an outward bevel. This is so that when you connect them, it becomes more seamless and will lead to less sanding and clean up later. Next, for those side pieces, we're gonna cut out some two millimeter foam rectangle cutouts. Um, you can also score the lines and then they just go in those rectangle cutouts on the filter piece. It's these pieces right there. Next, we're gonna go over to the part called the inner side. Once again, one side of the like C shape should be cut at an outward 45 degree angle and one should be cut at an inward. Again, this is to make sure you have a clean seam. On the inner side piece, evenly around, I like to make some score lines to create the filter effect that's on there. So rough some score lines on there. Once that's done, heat it with a heat gun and you should get some open lines like so. Once that's done, we're gonna grab a piece called inner side is going to be glued to the part called center A. And it should look a little something like this. And then we're going to wrap the side piece around. And you'll see what I meant if you cut the bevels. Uh, you'll see when you wrap the side piece around those, like so, it should be relatively seamless. So for this one, I've seen a couple people do these like filter flares before. Um, and I, I never included them in the templates because I've seen some people add them and some people not. But these uh, flares on the filter here, I really liked them and decided for my personal build, I was gonna add them. They are essentially just semicircle uh, two millimeter HD foam that I just wrapped around the edge of the filter piece right there. Again, if you like that, you can add it. But again, I, I didn't include it in the template because some people like them, some people don't. And the part called center B out of 10 millimeter HD foam, we're gonna round that off so it should look a little dome-ish like so. And then we're gonna wrap that grid sequenced HD or two millimeter HD foam around it like this and then punch out the center. This creates that really weird uh, filter piece that it is in the game. I don't necessarily know what it's for, but it's there. Once you've got that together, the filter should look like this and we're just gonna copy and paste all that information to the other side because there are two filters on this one. And then we're going to cut the ear piece out. It's the part that goes on the left side right here. Once you've attached the filters to the mask like so, and you've got your ear piece cut out, I then like to put some window screen mesh in the ear. 
Uh, and this is to keep it black and looking nice, but then I normally go in on the inside of the mask and cut a hole there just so I can hear when I'm wearing it at a convention. Once the earpiece is cut out and the mesh is added, we then attach it to the side of the helmet following the curve of the filter, like so. And then we are on to the center filter, that is this part. For the center filter to make life a little bit easier, uh, I like to make a 24 millimeter stack of foam. So how I do this is I normally do two tens and a four. And you should have a brick that looks a little bit something like this. And then we're going to trace the center filter pieces out. There are thinner ones and thicker ones. We're gonna use the 10, 10, and four for this section first. Trace the center filter top, left, and right cutouts on there. And I cut these out with a bandsaw instead of a knife, just so I can make sure I have really crisp, clean cuts. And they should look something like this. In the template, there is this like hole and cross section piece like this. I opted not to use that for this build because a lot of times in the spur of the moment, I will change things. Um, instead of using that circle with the three legs, I ended up making four millimeter spacers to connect these pieces together, which I like, uh, it works just as good. And the four millimeter spacers are gonna go on the edges of this and I do leave a little lip so that there's a you know gap, a visible gap right there. Once you've got your four millimeter spacers or that cross section piece attached, then I do add a circle in the center so it stays sealed. Next, you're gonna cover the uh, center exposed area, whether it be from a spacer or that cross section, you're gonna cover that with the same window screen mesh we used before. And then you're gonna add your center detail. I opted to add a little bit more detail. You don't have to if you don't want to, but then we have the general shape of the build. At this point, I like to round all of the edges on this because you know weathered metal does not stay 90 degrees. So I like to round, just soften, not even like fully round them off, just soften the edges of the foam. That's just gonna make it looking nice and realistic. Then we're gonna add the center, the top left and right details. They're the smaller versions of the center uh, template, but they're done out of six. They're done out of six. Attach those and then we're gonna cut some two millimeter strips um, and those are gonna be banded around the whole uh, center filter like so. Now, then what I did was I marked two circles on the left and right panel of the center filter. And then I created these rings out of two or four millimeter HD foam that go on the bottom parts of the filter right here. This is gonna act as your hose connector pieces for later. I should put the hoses on actually. All right, hoses and antenna. You see now it's, now it is complete. So after you've got your hose connectors and your center detail built, we're gonna go ahead and attach that to the rest of the helmet. Uh, for it, I like to use the large contact cement. It just goes on and you can make it like really form to the helmet that way better. Then we're gonna go and add the uh, nose spike. For the nose spike, I just took a toothpick, uh, like a fat toothpick or uh, what is it, a uh, kebab skewer, threw that on the uh, belt sander and then just poked that through the center just above the center filter. Next, I added some of the screw details. Um, once again, uh, keep a reference image of the helmet with you at all times, just in case I miss something or if you wanna add some variation. A lot of the times I don't add some of the finer details to the template, just that way you can kind of edit it and make it your own. I always want to encourage you to learn through building rather than me just giving you all the answers. I feel like that way you're not learning. So again, if you want to fully enjoy things, come up with your own methods, come up with your own detailing and whatever, but let's get back into the regular scheduled programming. After the center mask is attached and you've got your screw details on there, we're then going to attach the mask to the helmet. Uh, so we've got the, the this piece is gonna attach to the, the dome, the this piece. Um, and for that, what I like to do is use barge contact cement and go over the mask of the helmet like so, and then on the inside of the dome itself, and then meet it. But you'll notice there is a pretty significant gap in the back of the mask section. I leave that there on purpose so that way uh, some people have got, uh, especially if you're me and you've got long hair, but this little bone back there, some people's are wider and that becomes a failure point in the build for a lot of people. So that part is not included in the template. What I did was made a void fill piece out of some four millimeter or six millimeter HD foam. So that way, when you put this on, once again, the way this kind of helmet goes on, you're gonna put the chin on your eyebrow and then roll it back like so. 
patrolling the Mojave almost makes you wish for a nuclear winter. Once you've got that part done, we're gonna go over to the radio flashlight thing. I used to call it a camera and a flashlight in my previous videos, but upon looking at it and looking at the reference images in period accurate uh, helmets for this, uh, it, it would be a radio and maybe a flashlight. Um, and for this build, I'm not going to include the electronics because I've done several different versions for the electronics just depending on customer needs. Uh, I'm going to put something different in mine right there. So we are not going to cover the electronics in this video. If you want some ideas on what to do with it, leave a comment and I'll eventually get to it in you know three or four years. Trace all of the flashlight and radio pieces out on the correct size foam. This part is going to be very template heavy. All the instructions are on the template for this part because it is very hard to instruct this verbally because there are a lot of little parts on this piece. Cut out your pieces make sure to cut the angles as shown in the template. Uh, they will either be color coded or just marked what edges need like a 45 degree angle which is an undercut or an outward bevel or an, uh, a V cut. We're gonna start with parts A. So all of your parts A will be this kind of back piece right here. And we're going to assemble them once again in relevance to how they are listed on the template. There is a back, under, curve, side, whatever, and it should be built kind of like this in the clips. Once part A is put together, it should look something like this. Don't mind the seams in the video. We are gonna clean that up in a little bit. Then on to part B, which is uh, the bottom base right here. The part B is really straightforward. You've got that 10 millimeter piece that goes on top of the six millimeter piece, and then you have the side banding. Once that is put together, it should look something like this. And again, if you want to, as we're going along, round off your edges, or just wait till you've got the whole thing assembled and do it at then. Then on to part C. Part C is much of the same. Should come together a little something like this. Part D uh, is the simplest of the bunch. It makes this little trapezoid shape when it's done. And then you should be able to, at this point, sand all the edges, round everything off, make sure there's no seams, and then we're going to fully assemble. Part B is gonna have part A join on the upper back side. If you're looking at it, the upper left side like so. Then B gets added, or C gets added to the right side of part B. D gets added to the top of C. And then at this point, you've got the generic build done. You are done at this point if you don't wanna add all the details. Now the details is what's really gonna kick it. Now for the variant of helmet that this is, again, there are, there are I think five different variants in the game, um, all of like, similar base build but different like styles for certain things so again have your reference image up and kind of pick and choose how you want to do this for the details on this version i added this little battery pack by using some acrylic rods and then making a two millimeter strip band around it once those were done i added some little two millimeter rivets or foam rivets just to kind of make it look like they were kind of riveted in place, I guess. And then I did add this little piece back here and this is gonna hold our antenna, if you have an antenna. At this point then, I like to go ahead and drill out my holes for my tubes and my electronics. This is at the point if you decide you wanna do electronics or you want to add all the fun tubes that are all over this helmet, um, now is the point where you do that. Again, I in the clips, I drilled this hole wrong. Uh, it shouldn't go on the face of B, it should go on the outward facing edge, like so. Drill all of your holes for the appropriate size split tube. Uh, again, I, I'm I'm using some like a uh, wire uh, sheathing tube um, or corrugated tube is how you can find it at the hardware store, Amazon or whatever. And then I add the rivet like details, I add button like details, and then I add this uh, two millimeter lip around all of the holes. Again, I just use some punches to do this. Uh, just so it doesn't look like they're just going directly into the helmet. They look like they're supposed to be there with like some banding and whatnot. Once again, in the clips, uh, you don't see me add this antenna, but here I will show you. It's just a little hobby radio antenna, and I just put it in that little back rectangle, like so. Um, after I paint it, I will super glue that in place. Now we're going to attach the radio piece to the rest of the helm. Now, depending on your placement of the bucket to the mask. Uh, the uh, radio part may need some trimming. Um, again, it should just fit on like so. Once again, I did cut, I cut a relief 
there and I cut a relief there just so it kind of like set flush up against the helmet. But again, it's gonna vary because I'm not in your shop. I can't tell you what you did or what you didn't do. Um, so yeah, with that attached, here are some of the finished parts. Here's what it looks like. Ba -da -da -da. Ooh, ah. Next, what you are gonna wanna do, I didn't record much of me doing any damage or anything to it, uh, just because, it, once again, I want you to kinda walk away from this tutorial and kinda put your own flair and your own spin on it. Uh, so I did some various cuts and damages using my Dremel tool, I did some dents with the back of a ball peen hammer, you know, sky's the limit, and then before I paint this, I'm gonna add some like rust with some Bondo. If you wanna see a paint texture and damage guide at some point, let me know down in the comments and I will make a full dedicated video to that. Once it's all attached and you're satisfied, we're done with the base build. I will end up, uh, you know, putting some red acrylic lenses in the you know, lens portion um, and adding some electronics and whatnot, but that's not anything that you need to worry yourselves about at this point. If you want to see a paint tutorial on this specific build, or if you just want a generic paint tutorial, let me know down in the comments and I will eventually get to it in you know, three or four years. Oh, I just flung the antenna right out of that. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I know this was a long time coming, and I know I promised I'd get this out sooner, um, but this is one of those, uh, what we in the industry like to call a cursed project. I hope that gets bleeped. Um, I tried so hard to get this done on time and in a timely fashion, um, but it just that was not in the cards. Some, if there is a higher power, he really did not want this tutorial to come out. I really, really hope uh, you guys are enjoying the kind of return to YouTube that Ryan and I are doing here. Uh, I'm enjoying being back. I'm enjoying the tutorials. It just adds a lot of extra work to my already consistently busy schedule. If you want to support the page, there's a YouTube membership and a Patreon. There aren't many bonus rewards other than Patreon gets day early access to everything. Um, if I've done my job, there'll be a t-shirt link if you want to do that. There's an affiliate link down below to Blick Art Materials to get rolls of foam and whatnot. If you end up building this or anything else on my website, please uh, share it with me. I'd love to see it or I may feature it on my Instagram story. If you want to get in contact with me, Instagram is the best method besides email. And uh, yeah, let me know if you have any other recommendations for future builds down below. And now it's time for thumbnail pose. Oh, shite on a shingle. I need to, like, fully install that.